Welcome back to my course that the industrial biotechnology. Uh, in the last uh, two lectures, I covered the ethanol fermentation process. Now I am going to discuss the brewing industry. And uh, brewing industry that deals with the beer making industry largely used throughout the world. So we will give some detailed information on that. Now if you look at uh, the brewing, brewing is the product of malt beverage is the name given by the combined process of preparing the beverage from infusion of grains that have undergone sprouting what we call malting and the fermenting the sugary solution to begin to grow to by yeast whereby a portion of carbohydrate is changed to alcohol and carbon dioxide. That means uh, what happens in case of brewing industry that uh, we use uh, some kind of uh, grain because we use mostly the barley grains and these barley grains undergo some kind of malting process and during the malting process it produces hydrolytic enzymes and after that this is used, uh, uh, this is dry then we make it a powder and then we make it dough. Dough means with the help of water we make a, a semi-solid mixture and keep at different temperature for hydrolysis of, of starch and the proteins. And then, <clears throat> then we get the soluble uh, glucose. This soluble glucose when uh, used by the yeast cells it produces the alcohol. Now probably this has been invented by the Egyptian and more than 130 billion liter of beer sold per year producing total global revenue of 294.5 million uh, millions, uh, uh, that is the dollar uh, in 2006. This is a little old figure but now it has been increased to a great extent. Now there are different examples of malt beverage that is uh, available in the market. The mostly we have four different malt beverage, one is called lager, and there is ali. Lager is largely used in India. Then we have ali, which is literally the darker color, and porter is more darker, you can see, and there is a stout. So there, <coughs> the different, uh, different types of uh, beer has been marketed, and uh, mostly throughout the world we have these two type of beer, mostly used by the people. One is called lager, another we call ali beer. Now question comes, what are the ingredients that is required for the beer producing industries? One is water, then starch source, yeast and hops and other additives. Now here I want to stress among all the alcoholic beverages, the beer is considered as the energy rich drink. And why it is the energy rich drink? The reason is that the it not only contains alcohol but it contains significant amount of proteins. So that is that is why because no other drinks contain that much of protein. This protein comes from the barley grains. So so this is the, that is why it is called as the energy drink. This drink. Now if you look at this um, the ingredients that is used in the uh, the beer making industry that is starch is uh, we we have starch source and starch stores might, might be the barley grains as such. Maybe we use some malt adjunct. Malt adjunct is nothing but maybe rice, rice starch, maybe wheat starch that is used as a malt as a, as a, as a source of um, as a starchy material. And why it is used? This is used for diluting the color. The, you have seen that color of the beer is different. We suppose we want light color beer, then we shall have to use some malt adjunct. Then yeast we use for the fermentation. I hopes this is very important ingredients as the beer industry, brewing industry is concerned because it gives the typical flavor and aroma of the of the beer. So we have this is barley grains, then hops, the waters, and yeast. This gives the uh, beer. The now question to the what should be the here there is a the very important issue that we have. What should be the quality of water in the brewing industry? Not only in brewing industry. What should be the quality of water in different fermentation industries? 
and whether we should go for uh, 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 distilled uh, distilled water or demineralized water or we should use the tap water or uh, because this is because if you use the demineralized water naturally it will be costly and if we if we use the distilled water it is more costly if we use tap water it might be cheaper now what is the basis of you be using this uh, the water in the fermentation industry now when we when we use any kind of water source first we should have some kind of analysis of the water where analysis uh, on the basis of some it mostly contains some kind of minerals and we still have to find out what are the minerals uh, present in the uh, in the particular uh, this uh, water and whether those minerals having some kind of effect on that fermentation process i can give a typical example particularly if you if you talk about the um, this uh, that beer making industry that i told you that one important step uh, step is the sacrification of the starch now in the sacrification of starch alpha amylase plays very important role for the degradation of the starch to uh, glucose now this alpha amylase it has been found in presence of calcium ion the thermostability of alpha amylase that increases to a great extent so if your if your um, if your water contains some kind of calcium ion this is added advantage of that similarly we still have to find out the presence of some minerals whether it impart any kind of uh, color to the uh, to the beer or or it has some other effect on the beer so if you find this is not affecting the quality of the beer then we can go for using the tap water otherwise we still have to think for the using the demineralized water for a typical fermentation process i can here let me take the example of the citric acid industry and citric acid industry we we observe that iron and manganese ion that plays a vital role and that if uh, those are present there the productivity of citric acid reduces drastically so there is a, the no uh, no uh, 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 that it, so the water con the water should not contain any trace amount of iron and manganese. Uh, if it is present there, then the productivity will decrease to a great extent. This is how we can determine the water quality of the fermentation industries. So here we have taken the example of Dub Dublin as a hard water is uh, well suited for the making of stout because they have observed these contain some kind of minerals which is um, which is useful for this uh, particular process the hardness of water calcium and magnesium can affect the yeast metabolism growth that also you have to work out the biocarbonate can affect the ph of the fermentation the starch store sorts we have um, we have uh, yeah, beer provide the fermentable material it is a key determinant of strength and flavor of the beer the most common starch source used is the malted barley and other starch sources are the millet sorghum cassava i told you that we use the rice starch also wheat starch also we use the proportion of the yeast starch at the beer recipe collectively called the grain bill so this is uh, this is different starch to sorts we use now the ingredients of this uh, one of the important ingredients that required in the beer brewing industry is the yeast kind of yeast cell that is used and two type of yeast cell largely used for the beer making industry one is called uh, saccharomyces cerevisiae and uh, you can see that you know the, the special characteristics of these yeast cells is the budding this is this is the organism and this is the budding and i can i can i can i can i can share my experience with the with the with the alcohol industry that uh, that you know the major contaminants of alcohol industry is that uh, uh, the kind of uh, 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 the contamination of wild yeast cells now if there is a, this is we industry we usually use the industrial strain now if the wild yeast strain that you can easily find out suppose they are this is your suppose this is the industrial strain and this is the wild yeast so if you do, do the micro <coughs> microscopic study morphological study under the microscope you can easily visualize that whether your strain is contaminated with foreign that other wild microorganism that is undesirable 
So, that, that and this is the boarding is very important for the yeast, uh, this, uh, this is how you can easily identify the presence of the yeast in this sample and saccharomyces calvergensis that is used, now saccharomyces cerebaceae is considered as the top fermenting yeast and saccharomyces calvergensis is used for the bottom fermenting yeast. Now, here um, because I told you two type of beer is largely in the market, one is called alley beer and there is the lager beer. So, for alley beer production, we use the Saccharomyces cerevisia, uh, Saccharomyces calvergensis and for the alley beer, sorry, the alley beer we use Saccharomyces cerevisia and lager beer we use the Saccharomyces calvergensis. Now, during this fermentation process, I mentioned that one important ingredient is the hopes, hopes of the flower, mm, they also call seed cones. This is the whole plant, where the biologically it is called Hemulus lupulus, that is the name of the biological name of this and it looks like this. You can see how it looks, this is usually look, uh, available in the hilly places, they are used prepared primarily as a flavoring and stability agent of the brewing industry. Hopes contributes the beer, I can tell you that three different ingredients mostly is has one is tannin, resin and the essential oils that contributes uh, different properties to the beer. I can give the example that in case uh, in presence of tannin if you look at this tannin it causes the precipitation of the un, un, unstable protein because uh, because you know that in the brewing industry one important factor is the chill proof beer. What is chill proof beer? I, I already already mentioned that uh, that uh, beer uh, contains good amount of protein, and protein, as you know, at the high temperature and low temperature, it precipitated out. So usually beer serve under chill conditions. Now in the chill conditions, if the protein precipitated out, then what will happen? The beer will be will, will look hazy. That is undesirable. So it should be perfectly clear. To make it perfectly clear what you have to do, you have to, you have to um, precipitate out the bigger protein molecules because smaller protein molecule may not be precipitated at low temperature but bigger protein molecule will precipitate out at the low temperature. So you have to separate out. So tannin when because one, one process that you know we, we, we boil the liquid, liquid with, uh, with the hopes and during the boiling process that you know the tannin mix with the protein and it will, be, it will precipitate out the protein molecule. So this is the, the role of tannin and in case of resin is very because one typical characteristics of the beer that it has the bitterness in the beer. And this bitterness of the beer, why it is there? Due to the presence of resin, because it contributes bitterness and biological stability of malt beverage. Because uh, this is also has the antimicrobial property. So resin, that is the bitterness of the beer that comes from the resin. Another is the essential oil. This is uh, prevent the malt mold foam. But but is the main effect of this uh, the essential oil is the aroma. Because aroma, because beer has a typical flavor, and this flavor comes from this uh, the essential oil. So, so hopes contribute a typical flavor and typical taste in the beer. The hope is very important ingredients in the beer making industries. The major steps involved in the beer making industry is the malting. Uh, first is the is the malting uh, malting of barley grains. Now. What do you mean by malting of barley grains? Malting of barley grains means barley grains. What you do? We we, we soak it for overnight or two days to uh, to uh, to wet the barley grains, and after that we drain the water and take the wetted barley grains out and put it in a uh, um, the humi humidified room under aerobic condition, and then that uh, germination of the barley grains take place. That you will find kind of soot formations in the barley grains, and then then uh, this uh, that that during this process, the, the due to germination process, different hydrolytic enzyme 
that produce in the inside the barley grains oh, and these are mostly the amylases and the proteases and this is very much yes. so uh, malted food actually that is usually recommended for the for the patient as well as for the for the school children and during particularly during the examination all the children are under tension the doctor usually prescribe that uh, malted food the reason is that this uh, this uh, since it has the hydrolytic enzyme this is easy for digestion so the, the, the because the, during the during this uh, uh, tension that you know that our system doesn't secrete the uh, the enzymes as per the requirement so if we have, might be having the digestion problem and that is why it is prescribed that for the patients as well as for the uh, uh, for the school children during examination this malted food so malting uh, malting is a process through which we can produce this uh, hydrolytic enzymes the second is the mashing process mashing process is uh, after malting process we dry these barley grains when we dry these barley grains and barley grains contains good amount of starch and protein also during this uh, malting process is produce hydrolytic enzyme so when we dry it then what will happen this hydrolytic enzyme will mix with starch and protein molecules this will mix with that and then then we we make a dough because we we we, we mix with water and at different temperatures saccharification and proteolysis that the degradation of protein uh, but that will proteolysis will take take place and during this degradation process we get the soluble sugar soluble protein that we can get in the liquid forms uh, so this is the mashing process that uh, of the solubilization of the insoluble material to soluble material then uh, another step we what we call the boiling away hops i told you hops give the typical characteristics of the beer so boiling of the hop is a very important steps of the beer making industries then we have fermentation process after this we cool this material and what you call oat and this oat we take it in the fermentation process where in presence of yeast cell we produce the alcohol and this then it passes through the maturation process now this is very interesting that why what is the importance of the maturation process maturation process because we have ethanol in this system we have produced ethanol but if you look at our emdon mayer pathway then we will find that in the metabolic pathway lot of acid formations are there and uh, this uh, this acid might be present very low level in the in the in the beer and due to the presence of this acid it gives some kind of hard flavor so, uh, so so maturation is very important the reason is that if you store if you keep it for some time then it will the alcohol and acid will get the opportunity to me to combine with each other and form the esters as soon as the ester formation is there then harsh flavor that will go and sweet flavor will develop so maturation process is very important very important steps for the both for the beer industry and the wine making industry the this uh, this is the very important and there uh, we preferred that we it produces some esters the ethanol a part of the ethanol combined with the part of uh, acid to form the esters and you might be knowing that the esters are responsible for developing different flavor so uh, the, so this is uh, for what is actually happening during the maturation process now finishing operation means after that you know the beer can be used for the uh, two type of beer we have we have one is that we shall have to long time uh, 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 long time consumption and short time consumption so we have if we have immediate de demand in the market then what we use that we add some kind of preservative in it and uh, we do the carbonization and we uh, put it in the uh, it is marketed either in the form of a can or in the bottle or in the barrels so uh, wherever is uh, you you do it and uh, and send it in the um, uh, market but if we need long time consumption that we it is passes through the pasteurization process and the pasteurization i told you is the process through which we kill the germs because you know the so that is the, the pasteurization process is used for the long time use of the beer because if beer can be used for the longer period of time we go for pasteurization process 
Now, this is the kind of uh, flow uh, that is uh, process flow diagram of this process and I told you this is the uh, first is the malting process where germination of the barley grains take place. After germination of barley grains, we dry it and, and then we pass it through the milling machine. What is the purpose of milling machine? To make it powder form. And after making it powder, we take it in the we pass it through the messing. I what I told you in the messing that uh, um, that you know we we mix with water and this is messing is usually take place at different temperature. At lower temperature, the proteolysis take place and higher temperature saccharification take place. So we have two type of um, uh, massing process. We have infusion and decoction that I shall discuss in the. Uh, uh, later and then uh, that uh, main purpose that insoluble material will be solubilized here and then we take uh, the semi solid mixture in this here where there is a loiter loitering process loitering process is nothing but here we have a stainless steel perforated disc and there we press together and when we press then soluble material that uh, soluble material is comes out and the insoluble material remain that until the insoluble material can be used as a good fodder and and the soluble material we take it out and here in the we take it in the, the kettle in this kettle that we um, we adjust the sugar concentration as per our alcohol requirement in the beer because I told you beer contains the alcohol concentration of the beer varies from 4 to maybe 8 percent. So as per if we, uh, we have already seen in the stoichiometry that uh, 1 gram glucose approximately produce 0.5 gram of uh, the ethanol. So, if we want to produce 4 percent um, uh, ethanol uh, b b concentration in the fermentation broth, we shall have to use 8 percent sugar. So, 8 percent sugar you have to use. So, if uh, the after this uh, after this process, if you find the sugar concentration here is less than 8 percent, then you have to adjust by the sugar concentration by adding some syrup here. So, if you want higher sugar concentration, you have to use more syrup. Then you add here uh, this uh, what you call hops that and boil it um, and, and during the boiling process that I told you that tannin, resin and, and the um, essential oil they participate in the reaction and keep the typical flavor and then we cool it down and and then uh, we, we polish it we filter it out and then we cool it down then take it in the fermenter and we have we told you two type of yeast cells are used one is the saccharomyces cerevisiae saccharomyces calvergensis as well uh, because we, if you use the uh, lager beer we use the saccharomyces calvergensis here and then we <coughs> we pass it through the maturation process maturation process is nothing but is the storage vessel at low temperature we keep it for a longer period of time just to show that you know free, free acid and alcohol they form the ester and harshness of the beer will can be removed then we can filter it off and not only this during maturing process also we add some kind of proteolytic enzyme purposefully uh, why we add some proteolytic enzymes to degrade the bigger protein molecule in the small protein molecule so that we can have the chill proof beer so we can add that and then we pass it through the filtering system to, to remove the uh, suspended material then we package it either in the form of can or in the bottles or in the in the, in the, in the barrels this we, we, we can we can we can do this then we, we load it in the in the tra truck and and say and send it to the market this is this is another and the schematic diagram of this process that how how is this is in practice in the beer making industry this is the barley grains you can see the barley grains it is similar to the wheat grain only the difference is that it is little bit longer and a little bit, little bit thinner and the wheat grain is will be smaller and and it will little, little, little bit thicker that you know as compared to that and then as i as i told you first process is steeping steeping means soaking you soak this builder when you soak with water then this is dry but when you say soak this will be wetted this surface will be wetted then 
we put it and keep it in a float because where we maintain the humidity humid conditions and we pass little bit of air and during these conditions the sprouting take place the, the, you can see that kind of shoot formation take place here when the ascospores that you know that uh, the here in this ascospores the hydrolytic enzyme formation will take place and then after that we we, we dry it we uh, we dry it uh, to stop this uh, uh, germination process, and then uh, the, then we 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 pass it through through the milling machine. In this milling machine, we convert this to uh, the powder powder form, and this uh, powder then we 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 take it to the mass mixer. Mass mixer is nothing but I told you is mixed with water and it uh, may have the semi-solid mixture and at different temperature for protolysis as well as sacrification both take place and the soluble material we take it to uh, the, the total material we take it to the loiter tone where we have the perforated disc that uh, where we, we press it and so that we soluble thing can be separated out from the insoluble thing. Soluble thing we consider as a uh, the spent uh, grain it can be you can you can take it uh, take, take it back and reuse this or it can be used as a good folder then then uh, this uh, this is the, we take it in a kettle in the kettles we we take the hopes this we boil this with hopes so that resins tannin and and uh, essential oils all that comes in the soluble form then we have the separator here we take the insoluble material from the soluble material then we pass it through the heat exchanger to cool it down and then we take it in the fermenter we, we add some yeast here then then uh, then from this we can we can pass it uh, the, we separate the e cells then we can uh, maturation uh, maturation process in this maturation process with the kind of settling tank where we settle the your clarification of the beer will take place your beer will be and they, that you know the, and not only that that acid and alcohol they will form the esters and whatever remaining uh, that cells are there that can be uh, separated with the help of this filtration unit again you pass through the uh, plate exchanging in the exchanger then we we do the carbonation process that is not showing here and then then we put it in the different uh, continents we can bottle like this so this uh, gives you some preliminary ideas how the beer production take place because i told you that uh, beer uh, we have uh, four different steps major steps involved in the beer making industry one is called malting another is massing the hoping and the fermentation then it also we have another important step for the maturation process where the uh, harshness of the beer will be removed and um, major steps involved in this uh, beer making process is the malting and the hopping process. Malting process is the barley grains. We produce some kind of hydrolytic enzyme. This hydrolytic enzyme helps for the degradation of the starchy and the and the protein to the soluble form. And then in the in the in the uh, hopping process, the uh, it helps you to develop the typical uh, aroma and typical uh, taste of beer. And and then, um, um, then we get the we pass it through the fermentation process and and uh, maturation process and we get the carbonated this uh, now one one typical uh, things i want to aspects of uh, beer i want to mention that uh, in in case of though it is a carbonated beer drinks when you um, when you open the any 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 beer bottle you will find lot of foam formation and this foam will remain in the in the bottle for quite some time it will not subside so easily but if you if you if you look at any soft drinks bottle that also contain carbon dioxide as soon as you open this uh, uh, bottle you will find a lot of evidence of carbon dioxide will take place but that will immediately subside the reason for that is that i told you this foam formation is mainly due to the protein and uh, the carbon dioxide present in the in the beer and this is the protein that helps you for the permanent foam 
that uh, of the beer. That is why the foam remain in the beer for quite some time. Thank you very much.